In this video, I'm going to show you how to sync two different Jiras together using Elements, Copy, and Sync. Now, the use case would be maybe you have a client, maybe you have a vendor, a customer, they have their own Jira, you have your own Jira, but for some specific work, there's an overlap and they both need to coexist. Now, instead of adding everybody to both Jiras or doing a bunch of other expensive options, we can leverage the power of Elements, Copy, and Sync and specify which work we want synchronized and it's gonna be super easy to set up. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button, and let's jump into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go to your apps, find your Elements Copy and Sync, and get into it. Now, if you don't have Elements Copy and Sync installed, use that link down in the description as you're gonna to wanna to start a free trial to Elements Copy and Sync. And while you're there, it's a two-step process. You wanna install it in a source Jira and you also want to install it in your destination Jira. And we're going to do this walkthrough right now to so make sure as you're following along that you're installing the app in both the source and the destination Jira. Otherwise, you're going to have a less than ideal experience. Let's talk about pricing for a second. If you want to do a two-way sync, that is you want to do a synchronization between one Jira and a different Jira, then you are going to need to install and pay for the app in both Jiras. However, if you only want to do a clone and sync in only one way, you'll just need to pay in the source Jira. And that's it. And so I've already installed it in my source. I'm gonna to go to my destination, which is a sandbox, and I'm gonna install it over there as well. Now, when you're here, when you're in the destination, one thing you need to do, click on settings. Once you click on settings, we are going to click on this remote connections. We are going to allow the remote connections. This is very, very important. So make sure you allow remote connections. We're then going to go back to our source and we're going to go to connections and we're going to add a remote instance. Here, you're going to want to paste the URL for that destination. So I'm going to grab this URL here and I'm going to paste it right here and then you will hit the submit button. Okay. Once you hit that submit button, a request is going to be sent to your destination. And so you're going to come back to your destination. You're going to go to connections and this will have a button that says review the request. Under your actions, you're going to approve it. Once you approve it, this will go to active and then in your source, this will go to active and we now have a handshake. So this is good. Both of our jurors are now talking to each other and we're ready to proceed and actually start a recipe. So once you have all that set up, now you're ready to hit get started. We're going to create a new recipe and we're going to select copy and synchronize Jira issues, although you can pick any of the ones that make sense for you. But let's go with the first one. We're going to click on next. We're going to give it a name, client B work, and you can give it a description, special top secret work. And here's where the magic happens. Under your target instance, you're now going to select that sandbox or whatever name of that destination Jira that we just set up just a few moments ago. You're going to click on create. And now we're ready to set up our very first recipe here. And so this is the overview page. This is going to show you everything that's set up, but we're actually going to work through it all. So we're going to click on next and we're essentially going to start the process. And so in our source, what is the Jira project? Where do those issues live? And so we're going to click on customer B. That's our Jira project. And as we scroll down, we get to pick what kind of work do you want to copy over? Do you want to copy over a specific work type or issue type? Or do you want to just leave it open to everything? Now, I'm going to do a task because this is just going to be a very specific demo. Now, if you don't want to include all the statuses, you can also include or exclude statuses. And then let's say you want a label or you have values in a specific field and you want basically just if maybe a specific component has a value, then you can fine tune all this as well. Now, hit that run test. And assuming you get a good green, we're also going to find out how many issues are eligible to be synced. And so this is a good sanity check here. And we're ready to roll to the next step. We're going to click on next. And now we got to set up the target. So where are we going to go and send these items over to? And so we're going to go over here. We're going to set up demo configs. And then you're going to map out, okay, so that issue type from the source should come up to which one in the destination. So I'm going to pick a task. They don't have to match. You can set up however you want, but that's what you're going to do here. You can ignore the monitoring. This is if you're doing a JSM thing, but we are doing just Jira on this go around. Click on next when you're done with that. And now comes the cool part. So in the couple, last couple of steps, all we've done is say the issues in this project are going to go to the issues in this project. But 
that's too generic. That's too broad. We need to specify now what data within those issues we want to sync. And so the first thing we're going to do is our fields. So we'll set up our fields here. And we're going to do, obviously, our summary because you can't go very far without your summary. So we'll add our summary. And then we're going to add our description. So you can do this right here. Add your description. And then you just add any other fields that make sense for you. So if you have your component, if you have labels, if you have any custom field, you're going to want to set them up here. Now, this is the target field and this is the source. And so make sure that you have the right mapping here because uh, you can have any mismatch, right? They don't have to be summary to summary. doesn't have to be exact, although this is probably a bad example. But any custom field to another custom field, they don't have to match the names exactly. You can mix and match. Just make sure everything exists and everything's aligned. Now, as we scroll down, we have our comments. So we can copy any existing comments. We can synchronize our comments. We can determine, do our comments go one directional, source to target, target to source, or are they bi-directional? That means that the comments go both ways. Um, we can enable, synchronize the edits, synchronize deletions, and we can skip down and come over to attachments. Same story here. Do we want to copy attachments? Yes, we do. Do we want to synchronize attachments? Yes, we do as well. Same thing with the comments. Is it one way? Which way? I'm going to go bi-directional, and you can synchronize those deletions. When you're done with all of those settings, you're going to click on Next, and then we do our statuses. Now, in order to do this correctly, and the only reason you would need to do this is if your status in one project is very different than the status in the other project, then we got a map. But I'm just going to create the item and it's I'm just going to accept the default status in that receiving workflow. So I'm not going to bother with this, but do know that you do need to know the name, like you need to pick a workflow inside of your source and it has to be the workflow that's in that project that you picked. I don't know it off the top of my head, so I'm going to leave it alone. And the same thing with the destination. You're going to have to pick the right workflow that is part of that project that you picked on the destination. So you might need to open up a couple new tabs and get a little bit more information so you can do this. But once you pick the two workflows, now you can add your mapping and now you can map the statuses. Again, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to do this. Uh, this is going to be my specific use case where I don't care. So I'm going to delete the mapping, but you might care and you might need to do that alignment. Now, I'm just going to leave it simple and I don't care. I'm just going to receive whatever is the first status in that workflow. That's what I want. Now, we have some mapping options that I'm going to leave alone as well. And then I'm going to click on next. And now for the trigger. So how do we trigger this thing? And so we're going to customize recipe availability. And the one that I want to make sure is available is the action menu. And so this is going to allow me to control when things go. You do have the ability to do a workflow post function. So maybe when something enters a specific status, then it gets synced because you don't always want to sync everything, right? And so that's going to help you fine tune this. But I'm going to do it manual for now. And once I'm done, I'm going to click the save button. And then I'm going to click the activate button. And so this is very key. It's a two step process here. So we're ready to roll. We now have our recipe ready. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my project, into that customer B project. I'm going to go to my backlog and I'm going to find my task. This is a task. Okay. And then I'm going to go into the destination because I'm going to show you that it doesn't exist yet. And so I'm going to go into that receiving project that we've called out. And of course, Jira has a bug and the new UI is not the greatest. And so we're going to go to our projects. We're going to go to our demo configs. And in our board, you can see it's empty, right? That's good. And so over here, I'm going to click on the action menu and you're going to see that I have a button that is client B work. This is the recipe that I created. So I'm going to click on that recipe and then it's going to load the recipe up. It's going to select my target. Okay, everything's ready to go. I'm going to click submit. That looks all good. That's exactly where I want it to go. That's the exact work type that I want it to be. Then we're going to let this load for another second. Okay, and then we see that it's done. So we're good. We can hit close. And now we can go to our destination. I'm going to do a quick refresh over here. And you can see that this is my task. It is now in here. And so now if I add a comment, this is great. Subscribe and download. Copy and sync, right? So when I click on that save button, I come back over here. I'm going to open up my this is my task and I'm going to give it a second because it's not instantaneous, right? It takes a, a second or two. The interwebs are very vast and big. And so we're just going to do a refresh and our story is over here on the right. And we're going to scroll down 
and we're going to come down to our comments and you can see that the comment has indeed synced this is great subscribe make sure you download copy and sync and so if i reply here awesome i just subscribed and i just started my free trial when you click save here it'll come back to this side we can do a quick refresh over here and again it's not instantaneous but it does take a second or two but there it is and so our comment is right there and as you can see our comments are synced and so this is a really great solution to get two very very different juras synchronized with each other and get that data going back and forth and this is going to solve a lot of problems it's going to be a lot more affordable it's going to let you save on some permissioning headaches as well because you don't have to close up everything in Jira. By default, when you set up Jira for the first time, all the projects are open. So when you invite a client or a customer over to your Jira, they can see everything. So now you gotta invest a lot of resources into locking things up and then you can invite them. And so now you're getting hit with the tax of paying the extra license and you're getting hit with the tax of having to do all the configuration changes. And so this is just going to control and you're going to be able to select what items make it over and which items don't make it over. And then once it's connected, then the communication and the collaboration is seamless and super easy. And so this only takes a few minutes to get configured. I hope you set it up and enjoy it for yourself as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and drop that like. Use that link down in the description to start your free trial and I'll see you in the next one.